Hey folks, welcome to Eurobike 2023 Best of Sports Tech. I'm gonna walk through all the cool stuff from Eurobike here at the show. In this case, sports tech, I'm talking about things that have some sort of like chip set in them. So GPS bike computers and trainers and power meters, all that kind of goodness. And I'm gonna dive into all the big company items like where is Garmin, what did Garmin release? Where's Wahoo, where's Wif? Where's all these companies that you know of? Are they here and what are they showing and is it new? Now the very first noteworthy thing here that I saw is the Imagine 606 or C606 computer computer, bike computer, bike GPS computer. This is essentially designed to compete with something like the Garmin Edge 840. It's got a full touchscreen display, it's got GPS, it's got full mapping on it, downloadable maps to the world, Bluetooth and AMP Plus, uh, sensor support, all the normal stuff that you'd expect. I got a full post on it down there on the bottom. And this thing is designed to basically be at a sub $300 price point, uh, which is pretty notable. You figure like the Edge 840 is, you know, 400 bucks plus or so. Uh, and, you know, Magin and talking to them are like, this could be 300, it could be 250, maybe even 200. I asked like where that line was and I got a little bit like KG on that as to how low it's gonna go. But Magin's known for making effectively budget priced products, but with a pretty compelling like pack list uh, features there. Now the challenge though is that we don't really know what all those features are from a software standpoint. And in you know 2023, all those specs that I just mentioned, touchscreen display, color display, maps, etc. That's kind of the baseline for, for a computer, at least maybe not the touchscreen part of it, but the other parts. Uh, you think about something like the Edge 830, which is you know, a couple years older now, they have all that and you can find those in the 200s or so. Uh, and the same is true for other bike computers from other companies that are now in the 200, like the Hammerhead Crew 2 has been sitting at like 260 or so. So you know, the, the baseline for what's a success at that price point has moved up and the way it moves up is with compelling features and we don't really know those features yet. Now the next thing I saw that's super cool that is not in my typical wheelhouse, I was looking at something else I'm going to talk about these power meter pedals in just a second and I stumbled into this thing in the same booth which is the Psych Plus booth. I'm not sure how you pronounce it exactly like CYC Plus but either way it's this little crazy mini pump. Uh, there are actually two mini pumps a bigger one and a littler one uh, about the same weight though because they've changed battery technology and stuff like that uh, and the price for these are supposed to be between like 80 and 100 bucks and Hear me out on this. At first glance, I'm like, that seems really expensive. And because at first I'm thinking, I'm gonna stick this in my saddlebag, it's got USB C power, and the smaller one is the size of like two CO2 cartridges. So that's perfect, right? You can, you has the power inside of it to pump up uh, two bikes worth or four bikes worth, depending on the pressure. Uh, so super cool there. But then you get to the price and you're like, 90 bucks buys a lot of CO2. I'm not, I'm not sure that that makes sense. Uh, from there, I start looking at the bigger one though. And the bigger one has a display on it. Uh, it's got buttons on it. It can actually set a given pressure up to 120, 130 PSI. Smaller ones, 100 PSI. And then I realized what it's actually solving, which is taking a pump with you while you travel, either in your vehicle, but in my case, I don't really have that. So instead it's in my bike bag. So this past weekend, my wife raced Ironman Austria. And with that, I brought with her like a big old bike pump because I just needed to be able to pump up the tires at the hotel. Uh, not so much on race day, there's tons of pumps around that, but at the hotel. And this is the same is true when I travel all the time. And that's what this is used for. I can save having to carry this stupid ass big old bike pump with me to know the exact pressure by using the little bike pump here that's tiny and small. And certainly I could find, you know, other bike pumps out there that are probably smaller and have a gauge on them. But why well, did that when I got some electronic to do it? So I can see the appeal of this. I'm still not sold on 90 bucks, but I think this is cool. And I suspect we're going to see more of this. Anyways, the point of that booth though, was their power meter pedals. Uh, and so they've got these power meter pedals there, which they have absolutely zero information on, or almost zero information on. The only things they know at this point in time is that it's both gonna be Lookio and Shimano uh, SPD SL compatible. Uh, they know it's gonna have AMP plus and Bluetooth Smart. They claim that it'll hopefully have plus or minus 1% accuracy range. Uh, and they claim the battery life is an astounding 120 hours, which is pretty solid for a rechargeable. And they also claim that it's gonna be out this fall, 2023. Uh, but it didn't pair with my watch, it didn't even show up on the watch at all, which is fine, they probably shouldn't have a charge, or maybe there was nothing inside of it. And this is the challenge with power meter pedals, is that they're really effing hard, like really, really hard to do. Uh, many companies have come and gone, many companies are still, that sounds bad. Many companies are still trying, right? IQ Square and others uh, to do this sort of thing. Uh, it is immensely difficult. They also don't have any price point. I'm gonna guess it's a budget price point knowing these here, uh, but we've seen plenty of basically no name companies, which is sort of the category I put this in at this point in time, trying to do power meter pedals and never come to fruition. So it would definitely not like hold out on purchasing something from a reputable brand. There's plenty of options out there in, the, in this realm. I suspect they'll probably see them here next year, probably still promising things. That's not like a slant on them. That's just knowing the power metered industry 
history and how immensely difficult it is to release a power meter. Speaking of new power meters, there are a couple new power meters here. There's a new Rotor 2 in power SL uh, power meter, dual sided power meter, uh, basically has a spindle on the bottom of it that measures the left side and then another set of strain gauges on the right crank arm that measures the right side. Uh, they made three changes there. They made it lighter, 70 grams lighter. They made it cheaper, about 100 or so bucks cheaper. And they also made it more accuracy going from plus or minus 2% to plus or minus 1.5%. The unit is available now, which is somewhat unusual for Rotor. Usually it's like, It'll be available sometime ish, but it's available today, which is kind of cool. Uh, and the fact that it is cheaper than before and has increased specs is good. I'll be definitely testing that over the next uh, you know, couple months or so. Uh, so stay tuned for that. In fact, the other power meter that Rotor announced is a new InSpider power meter uh, that increased the accuracy as well. Uh, and also the price point down to 449. Uh, and they're also increasing compatibility to Shimano chain rings and Shimano uh, crank arms later on this year. So that's something that I'll probably test with the new growl bike I picked up. Oh. Uh, it's all good. I'm waiting for that guy over there. So go ahead. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's making a racket. So. <laughs> Now the next cool piece of tech I saw was this little like combo dish here, uh, a wind sensor. It's called the Wind Plus and the combo dish is, there was like a, a wind blower, a fan basically, a fan, a fancy ass fan on a tilt thing. That wasn't what they're selling. That was just showing me how this product works. And this is not an aero sensor. When I first came up, I'm like, ah, so tell me about your aero sensor. And they're like, we are not an aero sensor, which required a bit of explaining. The idea behind these guys is they don't want to give you a CDA value, basically an aerodynamic value. Uh, instead, they want to tell you about your environment around you. They want to tell you about the wind the wind speed, the wind direction, what it's doing, what it's changing over time, both real time on uh, your bike computer eventually, but as of right now on your phone, and then also in post uh, in basically files that you can download from an analytic suite. And then from there, you can use that data to get faster, or you can use that data just to simply justify why your ride was so darn slow. Uh, certainly living in the Netherlands, I know a thing or two about horrific winds on every single ride. Uh, so I would love to have this on my bike and to be like, yo, this is painfully slow. And to be able to justify that I'm not the reason it's so slow. Now, the justifying is tough. The price point here, there's $5.99 for a Eurobike special uh, up to the first 100 pieces or so that they ship or that they uh, basically produce or make, whatever you want to call it. And then normally it's $900, bucks, which, is, which is quite a lot. They say their the hardware is ready, but their software isn't quite ready, which is kind of this beta process that our beta program, if you will, that the, the $5.99 people will get. And then later on this year, they'll have you know apps for things like Garmin Connect IQ, so you can have it on your edge or they want to integrate with Wahoo and others like that. Um, you know, this is super interesting technology. I just don't know if that's to me really expensive. It's kind of like the bike thing that we talked, bike pump problem that we talked about earlier on. That's really expensive for telling me the wind speed. Like I know the wind sucks. I know generally what direction it's coming from. Uh, and then since they're not getting into the aero gains realm, which is, you know, where you would sort of pull the information and use the information uh, in a more technical level, it's kind of tough to justify that price. But I'm interested to see where they can go with this, uh, but uh, I'm also waiting for a price that's more affordable. Like, give me, you know, I don't know, 100 and 150 bucks or so, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm cheapskate, uh, to have something that tells me the exact wind speed on my bike, then I'm game, but not, not 900 bucks, that's, that's crazy pants. Moving away from the speed of my wind or the wind against me uh, is all of the radars that were here. There is a ton of new radars and you've seen me review, for example, the Brighton radar and obviously you've seen me review the Garmin Varia radar in the past, uh, cycling radar, and then we saw the Brighton one, we saw the Magin one a year ago and uh, neither of those units in my testing on the most recent firmware anyways have been awesome. Uh, again, my reviews are out there, you can, you can watch those or read about those, uh, but there's lots of other companies out here doing radar. So the Psych Plus company I mentioned with the power meter pedals and little pump thing. They've got a radar that they had very little information on, more or less the same specs as everyone else. Uh, there is IG Sport, I think it's IGS Sport, something like that. They've got a radar, same rough specs as everyone else. Uh, we've seen e-bike radars, ones that can basically plug into an e-bike permanently, like literally just plug in down here uh, via Cambo system. That's super cool. Garmin announced one of those back a few months ago. I actually just picked up one last week and I'm going to rig up my cargo bike with that to see how that works in, in the real world. But adjacent to that is another company that had essentially a bike rear view camera. And this is not the first time we've seen this. Back about a decade ago, uh, I started reviewing a company called Cerevelum, I believe it was, uh, and they went out of business almost immediately. And they had a basic 
basically a rear view camera attached to a display screen on your handlebar. Versus new company Alps Alpine has their RS1000 ride safety system. Uh, and what they're doing there is they've got the same camera system that you can see, well not same, it's a HD camera feed that you can see right there that you connect wireless to your phone uh, and it gets between two and five hours of battery life. Uh, and it basically warns you of uh, cars that are approaching from behind. It uses uh, machine learning to go ahead and figure out what's approaching speed and how close it is and even to predict the curve if you're going around curves, whether or not a car is gonna, gonna go towards you. Uh, and then you have your phone, your handlebars and you see that. Uh, probably not really super ideal for like, you know, a road bike type configuration, uh, but it's more ideal maybe for a cargo bike or an e-bike or something more in a city scenario. And that's sort of the core difference between that and a radar. A uh, radar is amazing when you're out on country roads or not necessarily, you know, super quiet roads, but roads that are a bit quieter where it can pick up that traffic and warn you about oncoming traffic. But radar, bike radar is not great at all in the city. Like if you're in a proper city here in Frankfurt, wherever the case is, not super useful, just way too noisy, way too busy because of just constant pings. That's where the camera system could be more interesting. Generally speaking, speeds are slower. You're gonna be glancing at that. And obviously people are like, oh, you'd be looking at your head unit being distracted. I don't know, I think most of us have like a peripheral vision thing going on there that works fairly well that, you know, we can still be looking forward and seeing that movement of the car on the screen in front of us. The problem is I don't really see me putting on my phone on my handlebars all the time and having an HD feed. That's gonna burn the crap out of my battery. The company says they do have an SDK, an API, that companies could then make on handlebar feeds. So like if you had, again, a cargo bike with a big battery there and you had some sort of display system that's built into the, the bike, uh, then you gotta pull that from the thing. Lots of cool potential there. I can see again, going into some of the cargo bikes I'm sure you've seen going by here uh, that are like delivery trucks and stuff like that to be able to see what's going on behind them. That makes sense. I thought it was cool. Now, the big question is, what are companies like Garmin? What has Garmin announced here? What has Wift, what has Wahoo announced here? And all those companies in, and the answer is nothing. They've announced nothing. And, and why is that? Well, essentially, these sort of shows aren't super valuable to them anymore to announce things. It used to be about a decade ago that, you know, companies would go to these shows, they meet with retailers, they meet distributors, they show their secret catalog. Uh, and then from there, they'd, you know, decide what to buy. And then deals were made of actual like sales. These days, that doesn't happen here. These days that happens on Zoom calls and via like an online ordering system where you clickety clack and you buy what you're gonna buy. And the same is true for product releases. Uh, there's no real reason to announce big products for big companies at these shows. Instead, they can announce the products when they're ready and they can ship the same day. Remember, 10 years ago, five years ago even, you would come to these shows, companies would, Garmin would announce their product and then like, you might see it in a few years, not a few years, a few months, a few years for Vector, but a few, few months for everything else, uh, a few weeks if you're really lucky, but it, it really varied versus now, the thing for companies is they wanna get your money in, out of your pocket, in their pocket immediately by going and being able, able to announce a product today for immediate shipping today. And so, those big companies, they aren't here doing that anymore. They are here. So Garmin is here. They've got a big booth with all the fancy stuff and you can go check it all out in person and you can have discussions, uh, but they're, they're not deal making here. Instead, what goes on here is all the behind the scenes discussions. So every company I just mentioned is here. So Zwift is here and Power to Max and Wahoo and every single company that I you know, do reviews on is here. And I've had meetings with virtually all of them uh, and it's all about kind of future stuff and it's about where the direction is going. It's about catching up and kind of understanding that landscape a bit. The point is don't expect these shows to be about those big releases anymore. Uh, instead, they're gonna be about smaller companies as I just kind of previewed over the last you know, dozen or so products or something like that, uh, doing cool things that they're gonna use immediate attention that they wouldn't otherwise normally get uh, if they just announced something by themselves on a random Wednesday day in May or February or October. Now the next product I want to very briefly mention, but I got a whole separate video on that is an app called Rolla. Basically it's with competitor, but with crazy awesome graphics. Uh, but again, I've got a whole video either already up in the corner or coming out in the next couple hours. I haven't decided which one of these I'm gonna edit first, uh, but check that out. That is super cool. If I were to say like the one uh, thing at the show that people talked about the most, that was it. Everyone always asks me at these shows, every time I meet someone all day long, what's the coolest thing you've seen? And, and this year I can't say like there is a coolest thing I've seen. There's no like wow moment, but if there's one thing that stood out that most people are talking about, it's roll up. So check that out. Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting or useful. If so, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or subscribe. With that, have a good one.